I had spent about four or five years at that point documenting war crimes, documenting crimes against humanity and genocide, and had not taken very good care of myself. And I found myself pulled back into the regular army that I'd left nine years, or six, six years before. And I was unprepared for that. In the cold pre-dawn, I can hear generators running and vehicles moving on the other side of the base, but it's quiet inside my tent. None of the other soldiers I share the tent with is even snoring. I've been awake for a few hours, but I stay in my sleeping bag, fighting the nearly overwhelming urge to run away. The Taliban have launched a couple of rockets towards the base during the week, so we're all a little on edge, but that isn't what's keeping me up. I'm bundled into my sleeping bag, trying to control my racing heart and trembling because the dead have come to talk to me. They've been coming every night for a couple of weeks, the dead from Kosovo or Rwanda, beckoning to me, pulling me from a warm, comforting sleep into a series of wretched, tormenting, wide-awake dreams. Tonight, it's the dead from a farm near the town of Podievo, burned Bible black, twisted into hideous contorted shapes. They lie in a cold rain that falls through the burned away roofs and pools on the dirty floor. Do you remember us, they ask? Most assuredly. The night before, it had been the dead from the village of Rachak, 45 of them all shot in the back of the head and left to die in a rocky ditch on a frozen January morning. They've dropped by for a chat. Why didn't you do more to save us, they ask. Why indeed. Night after night, they appear on the big screen in my mind, an oversaturated technicolor writhing and imploring. Night after night, the murdered and mutilated come back. Each time, I'm scared and ashamed. I know they aren't real, I know they're images in my head, but I fear them no less for knowing this. They terrify me for what they remind me of, the fighting I didn't stop, the lives I didn't save. They terrify me for what they represent, that I can no longer control them from taking control of my mind. So I created an organization called the Veterans Writing Project, and we are a nonprofit based in DC, and what we do is give away what we've learned. We are veterans serving other veterans we give away what we've learned as working writers in graduate school and veterans to others in the hope that they will have the skills and the confidence then to tell their own stories. And we've been doing this across the country uh, for two and a half years now. Th I'm sorry, three and a half years. And we uh, also publish a literary journal called O Dark 30. Uh, you can see it online. You can get hard copies if you like.